in my equipment, I get a set of fine clothes. So we know who's dressed better here. Wow. <laughs> Listen, I have cottage core aesthetic. I get uh, a signet ring so I can label things. A scroll of pedigree so I can show people I'm royal or noble. <laughs> you. And I get $25. All right. Well, you're buying dinner then. <laughs> Hannah, how about that theme music? So good. It gets better every time I listen to it, and that's not a lie. It uh, always just baffles me that we gave my friend a very short time to come up with something that was also very short in composition, and it's just so rich. Like, I love it. Thank you, Scott. Shout out to Scott Little. Shout out to Scott Little. Welcome back to Not My Fantasy, the show where we talk about how fantasy and folklore and imagination relates to our lives today. I'm Cullen. And I'm Hannah, and I love how much more vague our tagline has gotten for this episode. (laughs) It just gets vaguer and vaguer, baby. Welcome back. Uh... I'm Cullen, and I'm drinking tea from a mug purchased from Switch City, Salem, 1692. Shout out to those dead people. Uh, I'm Hannah, and I'm drinking water, Indiana tap water, from an Essentia bottle that I got a while ago in a a town that has a graveyard from 18-something. Shout out to those dead people. Judge it's literally people. right down the road from me. Last uh, last episode, I drank a cut water, which is surprisingly strong. And I feel like that came across in my performance. Uh, <laughs> so either you're welcome or I'm sorry. Uh, unless you're Oliver Cromwell, I stand by what I said. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Um, that was... <laughs> and I forgot to... Um... I was going to censor you saying fuck and other curse words. But then I was like, "Ah, it's too late. I've already started exporting. And then the little animation I made for the background got messed up. I don't know what I did. I I did something wrong. But this time, hopefully, I do it correctly. But it was cute. You got to see a spider come down. And then it was supposed to go back up. And then you could you could see the stars twinkling. And then there was supposed to be a witch that flies over your head over the moon. And then there was supposed to be a ghost that pops up from the bottom and like does a little dance. Oh my gosh. Canva, baby. Again, not sponsored, but one of our favorite tools. Yeah. We're using it this episode. Couldn't use it. Couldn't use fucking Adobe to do that stuff because I don't know how to use it. It's hard. It's hard for DBU alums like us to figure out how to do yeah. Adobe things. Um, I, Even for screenwriting, not production. I'm referring to the University of DBU, Dumb Bitch University. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm yeah. head of the alumni chapter. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think and of I it don't all the attend time. the meetings. <laughs> yeah, I don't attend the meetings. I think of it all the time. I'm struggling to do something. I'm like, they really should have not picked a DBU graduate. Yeah. For this task, yeah. Welcome back to Not My Fantasy. Uh, we're doing a new kind of content. If you've heard of an RPG, it does not stand for rude people goofs. Didn't plan that joke, as you could Which tell. Which is, <laughs> yeah, because it's such a common misconception, common misconception about yeah. RPG. Yeah, or like really purple grapes Mm, mm -hmm. yeah 
So we're doing uh we're talking about uh the table a tabletop role playing game, which uh if you didn't know what that is, it's like pretend with rules, pretend with some math, you know, that's kind yeah. of you know that, that that's pretend what it is. with some Yahtzee elements. Yeah, pretend with some Yahtzee elements. <laughs> it's basically to get their rules to prevent it. You know, there'd always be that one kid who'd be like, and I and I shoot you, and I am uh the queen, and I am also the prince, and I am also like the chosen one, you know, like that kid that was always no fun and pretend because I always had to win. The Yahtzee elements kind of control that but Mm -hmm. a a tabletop role-playing game is about getting some friends together getting your imagination caps on and uh living out a story pretending you're in a story uh it's like a video game without all the limitations that come from like having to have something pre-coded right Mm -hmm. the only limitation is your imagination it's beautiful thank you uh so oh yeah we're talking about kind of the the mothership you know the central uh like what everyone thinks when they think of a role-playing game the the main system uh we're talking about Dungeons and Dragons specifically Dungeons and Dragons fifth edition uh and we can talk a little bit about the pros and cons of that system um Mm. but this might be a series we do of character creation in uh game systems to kind of you know uh explore some different kinds of content and i i have source books and stuff for some other games and i think character creation is sometimes is like in the sims it can be a really fun part of the game uh so it's kind of but it fun can to, also be very overwhelming it can also be very overwhelming um <laughs> but that's kind of the beauty i as a person we've talked about this maybe when we talk about video games is i would get often as a kid i'd get frustrated kind of by the limitations and Dungeons the dragons kind of relieves that for me Mm. Uh, because it's less about perfecting a skill that's often uh has little applicability in the outside world and more just about creativity and imagination and like what you can imagine where you can take a story and uh the skill aspect or the learning curve is there but uh it's a little more intuitive i don't Mm. that's that's me speaking and i'm a dbu alum so who knows (laughs) who knows with this dumb bitch (laughs) yeah from which city with a mug from which city yeah dbu is in which city yeah right next to (laughs) hoville Hannah, what's your experience with Dungeons and Dragons? Oh boy. Okay. Well, before, because we talked a little bit about Dimension Twenty um, on the pod before, so I have watched quite a bit of that content. But before that, back when we went to BU, mm-hmm. uh, was this after we graduated or when we played with Brittany and yeah, yeah, this was after this is the summer after we graduated. Yeah, so that summer we had started a campaign, never finished it. I think we got maybe three episodes in. Um, My favorite character was the guard, Stephanie. I like started to name the guards in this battle. And then I was like, this one's Stephanie. She's a girl boss. Literally don't remember that. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, So that was my first uh, actual interaction with any sort of RPG, let alone D&D. Yeah, I just remember sitting in Alyssa's apartment I think you were there. I know Nick was there because Nick I was virtual. Uh, helped me. Well, when we were doing our character sheets, mm-hmm. um, Nick helped me create my character because I had no idea what I was doing. Still don't know, which is why this is actually a great episode that we're <laughs> about to do. Um, and so we played a couple episodes. Um, yeah, we ended up being virtual because you what you went back to Michigan. I was right? in Detroit. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. graduation weekend. That was my last left. I mean, yeah, I was gone. I mean, you didn't have anywhere to live. <laughs> yeah. They were kicking you out. Um, so yeah, so that was sort of my first and really only interaction with playing the game. Um, and then our lives sort of you know took off different directions. We didn't really have time to pick up uh, the campaign yeah. anymore. Um, and but, yeah. you were upset because we kept making Shrek jokes about your character. So. And we'll talk a little bit more about that, I guess. But I think it was because I 
I didn't really understand the concept of the game and what I was really supposed to be doing. And so that really started in the character creation process. And I do have a tip for people who are going to be starting out, even though I have only ever played three episodes of one campaign that we never finished. I feel like it is a helpful tip. But anyway, teaser. <laughs> teaser. Um, we love a teaser. Because I feel like it'll make more sense once we actually get into it, because I'm hoping that I do this correctly. Um, but I have made a character. I've played a couple rounds. But then after that, I got really into Dimension 20 content. I don't really know how I got into it. Yeah. I think it just like popped up on my feed one day and I started watching it. I was like, oh my God, Lyle, this is hilarious. Um, so we started watching it. And since then, Lyle and I have had the itch to play. But I think because we are very new beginners that we would probably want to do like a one shot. Um, so this is actually a really good practice for me to be able to make a character so I know what I'm doing. Yeah, that's what I have to say about that. Yeah, my experience with D&D, I came from a no D&D household referred to negatively. When I wanted to get into HeroScape, they're like, this is a little too much like Dungeons and Dragons. Interesting. Uh, and then college, day one or whatever, someone's like, do you want to join a D&D campaign? I was like, yes. <laughs> uh, so I did a few different games with some friends for a while but the the law i was a wood elf druid his name was bryden he had a tragic backstory everyone's first character has a tragic backstory but then when when i was an ra so my residents wanted to do a campaign this is probably my longest campaign as a player and this this is actually some fan art uh my friend brie made of my character who i will be recreating along with Mm. hannah because i I've made him a couple times. He's probably my most iconic D&D character, but his name was uh, Francesco of Unicorn, and he was this, like, paladin himbo who had very strict moral beliefs, but was very dumb, so could be easily duped into violating them. But they weren't the typical. Sometimes people will play paladins to be assholes and to be, like, racist, mm-hmm. and I was more like, we can't just, like, kill people unless we have a good reason. Uh, and so like they would have to if they wanted me to like do something slightly morally gray they'd have to be like they'd have to trick me I think he peed himself once because I got a really low roll Uh, I was thrown up on you know I was Mm. kind of that role in this sitcom of the party Mm. Uh, I guess like the Joey if we're going with a friends maybe the Andy Andy meets Chris Traeger I guess we're talking Parks and Rec okay because Andy's dumb and later became very sweet. But early Andy was kind of, he was creepy. He yeah. was a stalker. And then he became very lovable. Yeah. If we're talking about Mike Shirk comedy, that could be Cheaty combined with Jason on The Good Place. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So aspiring to be a moral philosopher, but with the brains of Jason. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so he was a lot of fun to play. I would love to play him in anything. Yeah, so that, that was that campaign. And then I played a little bit in grad school with some of our classmates. Mm-hmm. Nothing really lasted. Did some virtual. And actually, I started to become a DM in college. I DM'd a Disney-themed mini campaign, like a series of episodes we did over the summer. I did this mm-hmm. whole really cool dungeon, but we had to like condense it because it's like, it's our last episode of Cullen's Leaving in a week. And they're, ah! Uh, and then... Uh, I DM'd a virtual thing in co- in COVID, and then I started. I DM'd a really long campaign, like um, a year plus campaign, virtually in COVID. Now, I actually think virtual D and D, you really have to make sure your group is focused, mm-hmm. and I think having any kind of video element really helps. But I think virtual D and D can anything that's slow can feel slower like it's easier to talk over people so I DM that campaign and I also did a different RPG podcast I did a podcast Wanderers Cove that summer which was like a teen mystery podcast it's eight episodes it's still out if you want to look look at it and then as we probably promoted and you probably hear I, I know some of the promo was in now unreleased episodes 
but I'm sure that's he, right. <laughs> I'm sure he's a, this summer I did uh like a Dimension 20 esque style, like an actual play. Dungeons, Dungeons and Dragons campaign, four episodes on Twitch. It's supposed to be going up on YouTube. I sent them episode descriptions called uh does it show up? Camp Camp oh, Oracle. Camp Oracle. It's a summer camp for demigods. We had like a hippie girl who was born in a cult. We had uh, like a spoiled rich girl chosen by Bast the cat goddess. We had a closeted fairy and uh, we had kind of your classic hero discovering who their divine parent is. And it was this like kind of fun story about like being at summer camp, but also trying to stop the apocalypse, you know, like you do. Um, so I have, I, I still sometimes think of myself as a newbie. But I think I actually have quite a bit of player experience. Mm-hmm. I think sometimes I guess I have D&D imposter syndrome because there's so many like YouTube channels and stuff of people who make D&D content, not just actual plays, but like things about rules and stuff. And like, anyway, as we all, they'll say stuff like, as we all know, this rule is trash. And you're like, what? It's so confusing. So, mm-hmm. uh, but what I love about D&D as a system is that, uh, and there are other systems like it, but it's the most well known, but, and there are other systems that are more specialized and it's probably work better for certain kinds of stories. D and D is very much designed for like your classic sword and sorcery fantasy adventure, but it can be easily reskinned. Like I did a modern summer camp set in modern times. It's pretty easy to adapt the rules uh, mm-hmm. to, you know, whatever kind of story you're looking to tell and the rules don't have a lot of connection to a specific world or storytelling element or path. Uh, For instance, uh, there was a more mythology based game I was looking at when I was thinking of this concept of Camp Oracle, but there were certain storytelling elements that that were integrated into the system that I thought were a little more complicated for newer players, including I'd be my first time playing and were connected to world building concepts I didn't want to use. So D&D, well, that's great for that particular game, Skion, it's like, that's a really creative, like, there's that's, I'm not knocking the game for that. I think like, that's their, their choice to make a certain game, their game that like, has rules that really fits the world they're trying to tell. D&D rules are a little more general and can be, you can apply them to different settings. If you look at just like the amount of actual plays, the amount of seasons of Dimension 20, and like all the variety of settings, Mm -hmm. uh, that's part of the longevity of D&D is there is a world like they have their several like there's the Forgotten Realms and other official settings but that's just like if you want to you can set it there Mm -hmm. but I said Hannah and you can see on it uh like on your screens most likely depending on how this editing works hopefully uh a character sheet now D&D has an official character sheet I find it's a PDF and I find it hard to edit and fit the amount of information they want you to fit in like a easy way. Mm -hmm. And like you have to like fuss with font and then you have to abbreviate things so much. So then you have to look up the thing anyway. So it's, I created my own, especially because I was doing a show when I wanted information. The more you have to look up on camera, like every second of that feels like an eternity. Yeah. So it's like, I wanted to keep things, you know, as streamlined as possible. So it's like, it's color coded. It's based on like with the first sheet, having all this stuff you use like immediately and then kind of sorting it that way. Uh, so yeah, we're using an unconventional Canva design. Uh, but the classic character sheet is great. Uh, so we're just going to be making characters. It's kind of a character making tutorial and we'll giving little tips and tricks what I do when I make a character and, you know, like what I think about and just to like encourage you if you're new or if you're a seasoned player, see how I do it and see what Hannah decides to do. Just some fun little D&D content. And we might do this with some other systems down the line. Yeah. So let me pull out my trusty. Oh, you handbook. have the whole ass book. I got the book. I have book. a PDF. 
Yeah, I don't know where you got that. I'm pretty sure I have the PDF from when we played a couple years ago because I was like, I looked at it, I was like, that looks familiar. I was like, I think I have this saved on my hard drive. Yeah. It's always good to have a digital copy so you can look things up quickly. Mm -hmm. I like the physical book. It's just like, I think the energy when you're playing together in a room increases. Mm -hmm. Um, But again, I did a long campaign virtually during COVID. It's just, you have to like, make sure you're all on the same page. And I I did use, uh, what's that system? Uh, Roll 20 to try and Mm -hmm. like make maps and stuff. But that can be very time consuming because again, it's limiting like, okay, we're going to go in this space and there's these people here. Whereas like when you're run by your imagination, you can go wherever you want. So mm-hmm. I kind of learned to like rely less on the map system, except for combat. Hannah, Hannah Sylvester. That's my name. That's your name. Don't worry it out. Um, <laughs> if you're imagining a character that you want to play in an adventure story, in a classic fantasy adventure, mm. what are you feeling? So this is where my one and only tip comes in okay is to actually create a character that you're going to connect with and want to play because I think I had no idea what I was doing and so my character I wasn't really connected I just kind of did some general stuff and I don't know why I picked I think I picked swamp as my 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 best you uh, were a terrain. swamp ranger gla- yeah and your past was a gladiator and you're a tiefling. yeah and I don't know why I did that because I only understood some of those terms and what that meant for the gameplay and like me embodying the character so yeah I would say you know con- do stuff that you're gonna connect with basically not to mention another piece of media that would have been struck but the Dungeons and Dragons movie I really, really loved, I loved Michelle Rodriguez's character, but I loved, uh, also Tiefling, loved, uh, what, God, what was her name? Oh, the Barbarian. Uh, no, 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 that was Michelle Rodriguez's character. I thought the Tiefling was the, the Druid. Yes, the Druid. But okay. I was saying I loved Michelle Rodriguez's character, but I couldn't, I couldn't, what is her name? In the, sh- in the movie? Yeah, I don't remember her name. Uh, she's played by the girl who's in it that's all i know Mm -hmm. but i think i would like to be a druid okay druids are fun druids are fun so you're yeah i think playing a character that you can really embody connect with explore someone that you would write into a story or movie you know i think that is better than any kind of everyone wants to write a badass and you think is the game allows you to do cool badass things so your character will be badass in their own way. So give them another personality, you know, something that makes them interesting. Yeah, I think I'm going to try to make this person as close to my newbie skills as possible. Of like something that I'll be able to understand. I think very, someone who is not very aware. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, yeah, you are a ranger. Tief- tiefling is a popular race. People love picking yeah. tieflings. They're edgy, they're goth. So speaking of races, they may be a social construct in our world. Um, we're referring to different variants of the human race. Uh, the Fae, I don't know about that. But uh, we're talking about the whatever world we're, we're setting this story in. Um, there will be different magical races. And they, you know, pull from you know classic fantasy archetypes you got your uh you got your elves your dwarves your humans your uh halflings so public domain hobbits uh you have gnomes uh you know magical little forest and gem people um so similar to dwarves but a little more whimsical, a little more like mm. the dwarves in Snow White, less like the dwarves in Lord of the Rings, mm. mm-hmm. you know, or David the Gnome, if you ever saw that European cartoon. Nope. It's about Can't a little gnome veterinarian and he has a fox friend and he goes and helps different animals and 
escapes trolls and him and his wife mm-hmm. peacefully die together at the end um, oh spoilers they're uh, old they what about Romeo and Juliet No and Juliet they are classic uh, classic film they're ceramic yeah, they are garden gnomes. They are garden gnomes. So this is a different kind of gnome. Uh, hmm. There's tieflings, which are either half demons. That's typically how I play it, but technically they could, they're like descended from demons. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then there's uh, dragonborn, which are dragon people, which I think ga- became popular because that was an option in Skyrim. <laughs> so they became a core race. Uh-huh. Uh, they're also half elves. A little interracial love half makes them half elves mm. uh and half orcs i don't know why full orc isn't because i think there is D sometimes in the manual still has a relationship to all orcs bad but half mm. orcs is kind of like well you're half human so no and then but i think in play i feel like D as it has very much broken a lot of those classic binaries uh, and I think something about D&D is because it's so freeform, but it's also, it's a game. And so different races need specific stats. So we talk a lot in this podcast about like, what is an elf? And like, an elf can be a witch or a troll or a wood sprite. Like these definitions in folklore are very vague and dependent on time, place, whoever's writing it down. But once you get to D&D, things need to be clearly defined. And I think mm-hmm. that's where, because it's a game. So things need to have stat blocks. So that's where sometimes modern analysis of old folklore and folk tales, usually for comedic purposes, not this is less of an academic problem, but in your internet discourse, the people will get into these debates like defining these creatures. And the reality is like they don't have clear definitions. What race are you thinking? I'm, I'm thinking going human. to be a human. Oh my gosh. I think I'm gonna go really basic because I went with tiefling and then I had to wrap my head around I was just learning what a tiefling was when I was doing that. I was like, that sounds dope. I want to be that. And then I was like, okay, but I don't really know much about them. How can I be a tiefling? So I'm gonna go human. Gonna go human. I've been a human for a really long time. So we can touch a bit on the other races and kind of talk about like the advantages because human is kind of like your base level Mm -hmm. right so dwarves they're kind of designed to be sturdier uh so they have like uh they have stronger constitutions so they're hardier they're slightly slower they're shorter they have good dark vision they're you know better at combat they have there have two sub races which are like hill dwarves and mountain dwarves kind of based on where they live and your elves, they're going to have, uh, they're going to be lighter. They're going to be faster. They have a mem- like more magical intuition. So they're more likely to come with different spells or camouflage abilities. Uh, they have dark vision as well. And they have fey ancestry and trance. So they don't sleep and they're harder to charm. Or technically they have advantage on saving throws against being charmed and magic can't put them to sleep because they don't sleep like me in college uh and there are three sub races high elves so that's like your rivendell aesthetic wood mm-hmm. elves and then drow or dark elves which are evil elves who dwell underground uh mm. halflings they're kind of like your they're fast, they're light, they're whimsical. Um, they're lucky. They have extra luck abilities. Uh, they're extra brave and nimble. And uh, they're light foots, which are like your sneaky nomadic kind. And they're stouts, which are kind of like your shire dwellers. Mm-hmm. So those are, oh, we have humans. And we'll talk about the specialties that humans get because they do have some special abilities. To try and oh. balance the game. Dragonborn are literally half dragons, or they have dragon breath. Dope. Which is a powerful ability and uh, resistance to certain damage based on what color dragon they're descended from. Oh, fun. Yeah. So, like, like black dragons breathe acid. So, yeah. Thanks. Now that we don't talk, I don't have to pretend I like black dragon acid rock. It's a Taylor Swift reference. So. Hey. Yep, totally yeah. understood it. Yeah, gnomes. Uh, they 
have extra cunning, extra dark vision, uh, and they ha- there are forest gnomes who can speak with like small animals, and there are rock gnomes who have like special tinkering abilities. And then you have half elves who kind of combine humans and elves. So they have some of that fey ancestry and they also have a variety of extra skills because they're kind of, you know, they have the experience of a lot of biracial people where they feel like they don't belong in one community. So they're always adapting. Some real world implications. Uh, Mm -hmm. Then you have half orcs who are like menacing and relentlessly endurant. They're great attackers. They have dark vision. Almost everyone but humans does. Uh, and uh, you have your tieflings. They're dark vision, resistance to fire damage, uh, special demon abilities, uh, and the they're supposed to be played depending on your world, but they encourage you to play that people fear them mm. because they're demon ancest- ancestry. Um, but you know, it's whatever world you're making. So we're both going with humans because we basic, we DB basic you bitches. Along. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about that. Uh, what does it, what does it mean to be human? It means when you're given a screen, you can pick which boxes have signs. Yes. Which boxes ever- have buses, which boxes yeah. have bicycles, boxes of cars, and which ones don't, you don't touch them because yeah. otherwise- you're a robot. You're a robot. That's how you know. Mm-hmm. And if you can rightfully rule Narnia, you're a son of Adam, you're a daughter of Eve, you're a non-binary child of God. Uh, mm. Whereas otherwise, you're a fake like the White Witch. You're descended from Lilith and the Jinn. You know? Hate uh, to be him. Hate to be him. <laughs> Hannah's like, I love being descended from Lilith. Uh, <laughs> And it's like, I don't know if I can verify whether or not I'm descended from Lilith. Uh, yeah, can I confirm or deny? And so they have various, based on the Forgotten Realms, they give you various human ethnicities. I don't think I've ever seen anyone play that. A specific uh, human ethnicity? Yeah, there's like the Tethrians and the Demarns and the Muons. Right. Yeah. So, I'm just a human. <laughs> just a human. Typically, I would encourage someone's gonna call me super woke for this if you're playing a human i would encourage you to play a human with a similar skin tone and yeah. i would encourage i'm not making any hard or fast rules on what people can do but i just i feel in my heart i feel like that's a good path this is this is one of the harder parts of D character building is you pick something and then it gives you some stat effects but you don't really know what you're talking about so you're like ability if i said increase each of your ability scores by one do you know what that means no yeah yeah that's fine um so that means if we look at our character sheet Mm -hmm. our strength dexterity constitution intelligence wisdom charisma yeah those are all your character traits or your character abilities those Mm -hmm. are your core building blocks i color coded them strength is red because strong blood uh dexterity is green because you're running through the woods constitution is orange because you're tough uh (laughs) intelligence is purple that makes sense to me the mind is purple wisdom is blue the soul is blue charisma is yellow because gold flashy sure yeah that totally checks out i put human under my class in my circle it's in your because, circle, yeah. We're level yeah. one. We're making level one characters. But I'll touch on some things you would do if you were to make a higher level character. Typically, I like to start my characters off at level three uh, mm. because it is hard. Level one, you have very limited abilities. And so if, if you want to start and really get into an adventure, level three is a good place to start because you have more abilities. You can face more difficult foes. Because sometimes it's hard. You're like, okay, can't wait to face goblins again you know uh i mean do you want to make a level three character uh we can just make a level one character because yeah. i feel like that's how i would probably start yeah yeah it just depends on who's running your campaign um but we'll touch on some things that might that would happen at higher levels when we like pick your class and stuff okay really quick are we filling out each of the specific pages or just this first page uh we'll get to them all 
Okay. But the first page is where most of the stuff is happening. The other yeah, stuff yeah. is a lot more. You know, it has some. This all of it is information that you would do in character creation, but page one is like the more numbersy stuff that you right. have to reference. So we're gonna add a plus one once we decide on all our ability scores, which will be our next step. Uh, your age. How old do you want to be? Oh boy. Uh, let's just let's go twenty five. I missed twenty five. I think. Yeah, Franny's a little dummy. He's a little young. Uh, yeah. he's only twenty one. Yeah, I'm gonna still go twenty five. I'm yeah. I'm a little bit more aged. Your alignment, which I put on page one, this was actually where I put in for Camp Oracle your deity parent. So alignment mm -hmm. is something that some people love. It's to me, it's great meme fodder, but uh, it it kind of determines your character's moral compass, where uh -huh. they fall. I think people can use it, especially in certain editions. It had a lot more mechanical connections. Uh, that less of that now. Uh, the alignment is kind of like you have your the lawful chaotic axis and the good and evil axis. So mm -hmm. Like lawful good means that you love rules but like for justice, but chaotic good is more like you're Robin Hood. You don't follow rules, but like you're more of a free spirit and neutral good is kind of like your, your like Disney princess vibes. Like you're good. You just like love people, but you're not really, you don't really have a societal sense. Like Frodo could also, I would say, fall under that. Oh, um, really? Interesting. You could argue lawful because he has a sense of duty right you know so it's that's the thing it's it's like it's a good thinking cap but a lot of players don't really like it. i don't really play with it a ton because mm -hmm. it can be restrictive i think of it a lot though in applying it to life in that so you have lawful good neutral good chaotic good lawful neutral true neutral chaotic neutral chaotic neutral is sometimes called the asshole alignment because just people who do whatever they want for themselves and it can be fun to play, but D and D they kind of say it's better to be a good character. So then you are motivated to go on missions to help people, and that makes it easier right. to tell a story. And so something I encourage players is to make it easy on your DM because it also makes the group have more fun. Everyone's playing the game together. If you want to go off on your own, if you want to be difficult, like it can be difficult. That's, it's going to splinter the group. Yeah. So if you if you're going to play a more difficult character definitely want to talk with your dm ahead of time and be like well what is going to motivate this character to stick with the group because mm -hmm. we all love like a zuko like a a darker character turning lighter like that can be fun mm -hmm. but it's always good to talk with your dm like what you would like your character's storyline to be yeah and so that's why uh the neutrals and the evils you can run into some difficulties uh but they if done well it can make for great interparty conflict like when decision making but also don't try and hold everyone up like you can yeah there's always that point where you can feel this is, has gone from like a fun decision making argument to like we need to get going uh because then you have your lawful evil your neutral evil your chaotic evil a great example is i would think of like caillou as a chaotic evil um, he only cares about himself. It always comes back to Caillou. He hurts others for his own enjoyment. He's yeah. a menace. Uh, and then, like Lawful Good, I would reference another bald children's character. She has old pigtails. Nanalan, the girl from Nanalan. She's a meme lately on TikTok. Um, but she's this cute little puppet girl. She loves animals. She loves her Nana. She loves to play pretend. And, you know, like, she's sweet. She's helpful. She's enjoying life. And she likes to listen to her Nana. So I would see her as a lawful good. Mm -hmm. So if we're talking about different toddler alignments. Yeah. Here's yeah. the toddler I am. I'm lawful good. I'm the bald girl with pigtails. <laughs> yeah. She's bald, but also has pigtails. I love that. Love that look. Um, <laughs> but yeah, lawful good. Because again, I'm thinking of a character that's going to be really easy for me to play. And I am someone who follows the rules and I would consider myself someone who does good for myself and others. Uh, that's going to be really easy for me to play instead of trying to go against my own type and make that more difficult for myself to be able to stay in character and, you know, 
help my team out. Yeah, lawful good. My is party, sorry. Your party. It's party team fellowship, you know. <laughs> uh Franny is also lawful good. Franny was the nickname my for gave my teammates gave Francesco of Unicorn, because that's a lot to say. Uh he because I very much for most of my life was a lawful good. I think now I'm reaching a more neutral good, chaotic good era. But oh, still fine. very much like Franny was Francesco very much follows the rules, you know, even when he finds them restrictive and he very much believes in doing good, uh, especially by his friends and by people he sees as innocent. Mm. Um, he's a twist on the knight in shining armor, not in that he's useless, but that in that he just doesn't, there's just not a lot going on up in there. Next under your humanness is your size. Humans very widely in size in height, but uh, your official size in game. All right. So, so for the alignment, here. is that the last? Is that the only thing we're putting in there? We're not doing religion and philosophy. Yeah, that's like. I just put that there as can be like, that can be your guide. So got it, got it. Franny does have a religion. He was a paladin of Aurora Invicta, a goddess I made up, called uh, Goddess of the Unconquered Dawn. Uh, so she represented like hope and rebirth. Uh, and so he wore like rose gold armor. Like that was like his aesthetic was like that kind of like reddish orange, like, mm. uh, and he would say all hail Aurora bitch. And he would like stab people. Yeah. And we had a, we had a party member who was a cleric, uh, cleric of like a cult that worshiped the same goddess as like an entity of night. And so, like, I would, like, like she's a heretic. <laughs> uh, and then at the end, I, like, when I when, when I graduated, we did, like, a send-off for the character. And he, like, hugged her and, like, said, like, her religious thing. Like, I'll hail Aurora Knox or whatever. And she, she's, she's like, I started crying. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then, uh, so your size, your height, you know, this stuff. The only thing that you need to know is your size is medium. That just means you're like an average humanoid size, even cool. a large man or I'm woman. Five, four. I'm average weight. Yeah, I just put average weight because I don't want to like put characters weights. It's like it's no. exhausting. I can barely remember my own weight half the time. So your speed, which we're going up to, it's a blue box on the first page, which definitely check out the video for this one uh, <laughs> I chose my own locations for these items but if you want DM I will share a copy of my character sheet so then like you can be like oh this is what I you know uh, and you said you designed this yourself yeah I used you... like a template uh, but yeah. like this wasn't a and d template it was just like a like a the journal. Canva made template. Yeah, and I just kind of used that backdrop and then like colors just kind of Yeah, and it looks great. Yeah. Cuz I just I needed things to be more brightly colored, easy to read. Uh your speed is going to be 30 feet. That's your average speed. And next is, is your languages, which is on Ooh, I put two, on right? page 2. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for now, uh you're going to start with two languages. You can sp speak read and write common which is basically uh -huh. the universal language and uh, one extra language of your choice if you want a different language. So I had like in the Camp Oracle, it was like, it could be like Spanish. But here I'm going to put something Francesco would know would probably be like Elvish because he's mm. a noble, so he would have learned it in like school. Mm, okay, so um, I'm a druid, right? That's what yeah, we decided. So you're a human druid. I think Elvish, because I think you're you'll learn uh something there's like a special druid language. Okay. Language is a is a I haven't seen a lot of DMs use it because mm. at the end of the day you're just trying to get everyone to communicate and tell it. That's like a that's a lot. It's a lot of moving parts. But I've seen players use it to be like, oh, this is a language we speak, and that uh, maybe this person we're trying to like scheme against doesn't. We can be used as code or, you know, you're deciphering a secret message or, you know, in the campaign with Franny, the lizard people were trying to get us to kill all the frog people because they were their enemies. And I would be against killing the frog people, but because I didn't speak draconic, like the lizard people and my party members, the party members could lie to me about what was going on. 
So even though I I knew that they were lying, Franny Francesco did not. So he had yeah. to go ahead. Wow. Yeah, that's the most I've seen language really mm-hmm. affect. You know what? Look up the languages if you want. We're not going to... Because I was like, I know there's a page. I can picture the page. I'm just like, where is it? But the it's like, there's like, they're main, it's like, there's Elvish, there's Orcish, there's Dwarvish. Dwarvish. You know, like, they're just going to align with the major races. Uh, there's Celestial, which is like angels, fiendish, which is demons or infernal. So it's, it's, mm-hmm. it depends on the world. And we're just playing in a general world. So let's go with Elvish. And then... And then we'll get to your class next um, because okay. we're we're done with the human stuff. Let's take it back to the beginning. Back to where the earth, the sun, and stars. Take it lies. back now, y'all. Who hops this time? So yeah. we're going to go out of order. I know they say to pick your class, but we already kind of did. Uh, so, but we'll get into our class features later. Let's get, get to the meat and potatoes of this here shindig. Let's talk about your ability scores. Okay. So strength that is you know your natural athleticism your it's going to affect your attacks uh dexterity is your speed agility your quickness uh your grace so that's like your acrobatic sleight of hand and stealth so those secondary abilities all fall under they're color coded in my version but they all fall under your dexterity as athletics falls under strength mm-hmm. constitution is like your hp intelligence that affects uh so what you know knowledge like girls go to college to get more knowledge so like arcana history investigation so your ability to kind of like read a room like if you're what's going on there nature abilities religious knowledge so like nature would be like your knowledge of the natural world that's your intelligence wisdom is your like inner knowledge your spiritual understanding your street smarts if you will and so that'll be like your knowledge of medicine how to deal with animals your insight which is like your ability to like figure out what other people are thinking your perception like your ability to kind of survey your surroundings and survival like surviving in the wilderness Mm -hmm. and last is charisma that includes your ability to deception your lying intimidation you know, bullying, uh, performance, being kind of like your uh, performing abilities, uh, your, to sing, to dance, to play music, and persuasion being you, like what you can convince people of. Mm-hmm. Uh, so in order to do that, there's different systems. I prefer to do the die roll system. Okay, you get four six-sided dice. Uh, you're going to roll them and add the highest three. Got it. So 14. And you're going to do that six times. You have to wait. Oh, for each of the things. Yeah. yeah. I was like, for that just strength? What? Not doing too hot. Um, doing okay. But I'm only on dexterity because I'm rolling on my phone. <laughs> So as in order to prevent there being some dead space, I'm going to talk about something that I do, especially because the point of this is to be fun, right? So if you have low ability scores, that makes the game a lot harder. Uh, I think random tends to be more fun, but low can be rough. So I usually will recommend, like if we have, if you have a few that are 11 or under, like we could, you can reroll the bottom two. And I'm not saying this just because I got 14, 15, 8, 11, 11, 14, because I'm not actually about to play this game. We're just doing the thought exercise. Just for fun. Yeah. But just to kind of like explain how you can just kind of do whatever you think will be best for your group. Uh, I'm going to recommend the same for Hannah. If you have multiple below 11 to reroll the bottom two or like 11 and under. Oh, so to reroll all the ones that would be 11 and under? Just two. Or like, two so I have them. three, so I'm going to keep one at 11. I'm going to reroll one eleven eight and one eleven. It's really testing my simple math skills. I don't have any that are under 11 so far, and I'm on wisdom. So I, I did guess pretty good. High roller. High roller. 
So now I have 14, 15, 15, 9, 11, 14. So now it's slightly more balanced. Charisma. So, so the, the, the fun thing about this is you're picking six numbers, but you get to assign where those numbers go. So it's not, even though we did it in order, like you did oh, it in order, you can design. Got it. Build. And also because okay. we're playing humans, you add one to each of these numbers. Sweet. Okay. So that's six plus four is 10, right? And 13. Yeah. Oh boy. See, this is the part I don't like about Yahtzee is that I have to add in front of other people and people will be like, uh, that's a nine. I'm like, ah. Okay. I was at, I worked at someone, uh, Someone who in our timeline is the past, but in the podcast will be a future guest of the pod. It was like, I've done algebra. I know how to cancel out information. It's great. Okay. So I have my six numbers. I have 16, 14, 15, 13, 12, and 13. Did you add ones to all of them? I have not. Hot diggity dog. Hot diggity dog. We're have making powerful characters. I am the, the most powerful the human. Okay, so I actually have because as 17, a DM, the more powerful your 15. characters are, the cooler monsters they can fight. I was just gonna say, it's gonna be some dope ass monsters coming at me, but I'm gonna not gonna flounder. I'm gonna do great. We're gonna be the best level one characters. Seventeen, fifteen, sixteen, fourteen, thirteen, fourteen. Oh, wow! All right, certain stats may come along that may alter your stuff as we go through character creation but we're gonna assign our abilities so for me because a paladin is a melee fighter i need strong strength mm -hmm. so i'm gonna give my highest ability which is a 16 to my strength i need you know good uh charisma or constitution because again i'm fighting so we do, I have two 16s. You know what? Yeah. And then I'm going to do, I have two 15s. So I'm going to do one to Charisma uh, because he's very charismatic. He's hot, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, that's important to me as a player. Uh, and to his dexterity, I'm also going to do 15. You know, he's fast. He's athletic. Uh, and then my lower scores are going to go to wisdom and intelligence because that's that sounds about right. So he's going to get a twelve wisdom because he has he's more internal knowledge than external. And despite his fancy education, he only gets a ten intelligence. Hmm. And we're going to go through the modifiers after we assign you. Uh, what's your name, Hannah? What What's your character name? Oh my gosh, I don't even know yet. Uh, we, can, we don't have to decide now. Maybe I was gonna say I was it. probably just gonna. Well, maybe that, but I was also just gonna go to one of those randomizers. No, and just select Druid I and just keep. That. Just keep. No, the, I won't let you. I do might that. do that. I'm sorry. Okay, so just the first column. This yeah, is where I assign column. my numbers. Yes, and after so, I've already added the one. Yes. To all my so numbers. what's your highest number? My highest number is seventeen. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, let's. 17 all right so you're a druid mm -hmm. so give me give me the lowdown of the druid what's well, good i feel like you want your highest to be your wisdom because that's okay. what druids use to cast or their spells okay okay yeah because i was that, saying that or intelligence so that makes sense what is your second highest 16 16 pretty good how do you imagine this character being are they like kind of a frail character or are they kind of like a hardy wilderness survivor? Mm, I would say that this character is going to lean more on their mind than what their body can actually do. Okay. Are they good with people or do they like to like live alone in the woods? They're good with people. Okay. I would say give your your second you said is 15? 16. 16. Oh, your highest was 17, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would give that to your intelligence or your charisma. Okay. Because my next one is 15. So 15 to charisma. Well, what's after 15? You got a six, 17, a 16, Two 14s 15. and then a 13. 
I would do the 15 to Constitution because you want okay. to hit points. True. Okay, so 15. you're lucky. You have really good scores. Yeah. Um. Then 14 Charisma. Mm hmm. 14. You have another 14? Yeah. Uh, do you want them to use ranged or melee weapons? Ranged. So that would do dexterity. Dexterity, as the other yeah. 14. Listen, I've been playing some Minecraft. In Minecraft, love having the bow and arrow. I love shooting mobs from afar. I don't love melee because of I get turned things. around. Mobs of creepy things are what she likes to shoot from afar. Yes, mobs in Minecraft. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't, yeah. And then my strength is 13. Which isn't even that bad for your lowest. I was going to say, it's not too bad, but also yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. So now you're going to do I'm literally your... building a version of my Minecraft person <laughs> because this is how I am in Minecraft. So on your 16s and 17s, your uh, modifier is going to be a plus three. Okay. And how did you get to this number? So this is a chart in the on page 13 of the player's handbook. Fun. So it's I always have to look it up. I don't know it off the top of my head. Mm. So fake fan. Um, and then uh, and then your 14th and 15th, so those are gonna be a plus two. Okay. And then my 13, it's not going to be a plus four, that's for sure. It's going to be a plus one. Yeah, these were some higher level characters. <laughs> Intelligence uh, is going to be a plus, or not, That for me it's a plus zero, but anything that's 10 or 11 is a plus zero. You mm. don't have anything that low? No. Oh my gosh. So we're both high in that I don't have any negatives so far. Because yeah. if you have an eight or nine, that's a negative one. So that means you would roll the d20 and you would subtract. Yes. So, yeah. That's normal. It's normal to have an, at least one. Hmm. So, all right, let's, let's, let's get into our little class. Uh, so, anything upper middle? No. Uh, so, <laughs> the uh, classes are your, like, kind of your archetype of adventurer that you are. Hmm. So we picked classes, kind of unintentionally. Well, Hannah unintentionally. I was like, Hannah, what kind of person do you want to be? She's like, I'm naming a class. Uh, I did. Yeah, but we have, in the base, there's like 12 classes. They are barbarians, which are kind of like heavy rage berserker warriors. Uh, there's bards, trying to jack of all trades, emphasis on music. Uh, your clerics who represent the divine gods, sometimes philosophies, but I feel like that's like, sometimes it's a boring approach. I love dealing with the, the drama of a personal deity. Um, I did play a cleric briefly. who's a cleric of soon, a goddess of beauty. And I'd be like, do you have a moment to talk about our lady and savior soon? Uh, they're druids. So they're kind of like out in the woods. They're practicing ancient nature, magic, ancient nature, religion. Uh, your fighters who are just kind of your standard. I pick things up. I hit things, you know, they're warriors. Uh, your monks, which are kind of based in like martial arts mm -hmm. uh, and spirituality there. You have your paladins, who that's what Francesco is, which is like a holy knight. So knights, they're mainly combat. They got some magic. And then your rangers are, you know, ranged fighters in nature. They have some magical abilities, obviously very ba much based on Aragorn. Mm. Uh, rogues, your sneaky ones, dealers. Our friend Alyssa loves to play a rogue. Yes, she does. She likes to steal things from her fellow players. Sometimes. Yeah, she stole something from me in that campaign. I never found out what. Mm-hmm uh we have sorcerers who they are like the elsa types they have it born magic uh so i think most hogwarts people right the pure bloods well hermione was born with magic she didn't have to learn it but oh, her really? family doesn't necessarily have magic okay which yeah. is a kind in this game 
So mm. sorcerers, it's like your magic is inherent. You have warlocks who made a pact with a fae, with a demon, with a Lovecraftian horror. <laughs> and I think Hermione would be a sorcerer because it's in her blood, technically. Like Shawn it, Mendes. Yeah, exactly. It's in my blood. But I guess I don't think it's really explained how muggle born people get magic sorcery powers. Anyway. I want to say because of God, but I, I mean that mm-hmm. as a reference to when Harry met Sally, when he's there, she's telling the story about the underwear with the names of the days of the week. And he, the boyfriend was like angry because where was Sunday? And he's like, where was Sunday? And she's like, there wasn't a Sunday because of God. Like the way she delivers that line, I think of that all the time. Classic Meg Ryan. And then wizards, they study magic. Mm. So they learned. They got their ass up and worked. Okay, so uh, let's talk a druid. All right. Really quick, the third column, does there need to be anything in that? That is your saving throws. Okay. So that should... There. For now, it will match the second column. And cool. typically, it will. That's There are just certain things that modify or give you proficiencies okay. in saving throws. And a saving throw is like if something's attacking your mind and you have to roll intelligence, like resist it. Mm-hmm. Uh, or like strength, like if something's going to knock you off, knock your socks off. You got to resist with strength. If they're going to like knock you off the skyscraper, there's dexterity. Are you going to dodge a missile? Mm, a missile. Jeez. Yeah. Magic missile. So my party member when in Francesco's party, her name was Sarah Palin and she did. Uh, you played with Sarah Palin? <laughs> Sarah Palin. So wow. her whole thing was, she's like, my name is Sarah Palin because she didn't want to take it seriously. And then she did. But initially, she insisted that we all call her Sarah Palin, not Sarah. But then when she started to get into it, she'd be like, oh, I'm Sarah. And be like, mm. Mm, uh, Are you? But her backstory was that we went to school together. We were friends. and But she was a sorcerer. So she was a wild magic sorcerer, which means when you cast a spell, something random happens based on mm-hmm. like a random roll. And she cast magic missile because she was mad at this guy that attacked us. This like vagabond but then it like blew the result of the wild surge of magic was a fireball that literally killed almost killed all of us <laughs> she, like decimated the party so all right you're a druid what does that mean you let's start with your hit dice so that is this little orange box under this top thing your hit dice are 1d8. So I write that where it says hit. Oh, I see. Yeah, I'm it's... writing that on my own as I realize it's not, not what's happening. And your hit points at your first level are 8 plus your constitution modifier. So that's oh the God. second column. Uh, So 8 plus 2 is 10. Yeah, so you're a little, you're a little level that 1. That makes sense. Little one, level one gal. And that would be both hit points and total HP, right? Yes. Because we're completely reset. Yes. So my hit dice is 1d10 per level, and my starting is 10 plus my constitution modifier. So I start with 13. I'm a hardy. Er, 13 is not much. All right. And then. Well, as you get to higher levels, like for me, I would roll 1d10 and add my constitution modifier each time I level up. Mm. So that would be for you to roll 1d8. And let's talk about uh, your proficiencies. So that is, you know, what your uh, have abilities in, like what you know what you're doing in. So for armor, you're good at light and medium armor. So you would put that on page two under proficiencies. Page two, proficiencies. You said medium or light? Uh, Light and medium. Okay, medium. And so light. you can still wear heavy armor, but you're not good at it. So you take a disadvantage. Mm. So I, 
I'm good at all armor and shields. That's kind of my my thing. But druids cannot wear armor out of made out of metal. Oh. Because like that violates the earth. It does. So yeah. under proficiencies, I can get rid of shield because that's written here. Yeah. Get rid of simple weapons. Yeah, you'll add, I mean, we'll add other proficiencies. Because we're just starting with your armor and your weapons. Druids have a list of weapons you're proficient in. Oh. It's on uh, page 65 of the manual, but it is clubs, daggers, darts, javelins, maces, quarterstaffs, scimitars, sickles, slings, and spears. Okay, I'm going to write clubs, daggers, spears, etc. <laughs> yeah, for our purposes today. That's but, so many. Yeah, because druids are good at a lot of very specific items. They don't fall under, for weapons, like a large branch. Whereas cool. for me... My weapons are simple weapons and martial weapons. And you'll see that when you pick out your equipment at the end of this. Mm. And you see like, oh, these are the kind of weapons I'm good at. Tools. A tool you're proficient in is herbalism kit. Cool. You know how to use essential oils. I do. Yeah. And so these proficiencies you're adding a, when you have to roll to use your herb herbalism kit you'd add a plus two, which is your starting proficiency bonus. And you're also proficient in your intelligence and wisdom. So you add a plus one to your saving throws there. So if you go to the saving throw column, the third column of numbers, yeah, you add a plus, a plus two to your intelligence and wisdom. So, you know, the numbers all match, but now you're yeah. adding a plus two because if someone tries to invade your mind, you're strong. So now it's plus five. Yeah. Whoa, under intelligence. For me, uh, it'd be my wisdom and charisma. Mm. So I'd get a plus two uh, for wisdom and a plus four for charisma. Wow, very so charismatic. So charismatic. Next is your skills. So you're going to choose. I did a little P icon for ah, proficiency. That's what the P is. Yeah. Yeah. Because the numbers, I didn't reset them, but they should match unless you're proficient where you add the plus two. Mm -hmm. So if I am, for you, you can choose from arcana, animal handling, insight, medicine, nature, perception, religion, and survival. This is where I, I like to think of the story element. Mm. Are you someone who, are you bookish? Are you, you know, living a cottage core life? You know, like what kind of, what is their life like? I like the cottage core idea. So how many of these do I get? You get two. Okay. So I can get rid of the other P's here. So there's multiple. Yeah. You can always okay, so. add more later. So if I'm thinking I'm a cottage core druid, what do you suggest? What would make sense? I feel like medicine, mm -hmm. like people come to you in the village you know, from the village, like you live kind of on the outskirts and they're like, mm -hmm. I'm just fallen and I can't get up, you know. And uh, I was also thinking nature. Yeah, you know, you know a lot about like where to find good berries. Love berries. You love So good berry. in fiber. High in you, fiber. You love fiber. Love fiber. Fiber one. I'm literally uh, Jamie Lee Curtis in the yogurt commercials, but for berries in the woods. <laughs> Yes. Activia. Oh my god, what if that was her name? It could be. Activia. <laughs> it sounds like a human, a human druid name. <laughs> or Melanie. Melanie. <laughs> I don't know why, but that seems druidy to me. All right, and so for me, the skills I get to choose two from. Athletics, insight, intimidation, medicine, persuasion, and religion. Mm. And so he, he's pious, so he's going to get a, a a proficiency to plus two religion because he has, like, no intelligence, so otherwise he'd get a zero. I'd want to give you a zero, but because that is an option, I need to give you a one. Uh, and it's Tyra Banks. Uh, and then I'm going to give him athletics because that's his, like, main focus. 
in life. So he's going to get a plus five to that. I'm going to get rid of these other peepees. So the numbers on the side there. Yeah. So they should, they would match your the, proficiencies. Your proficiency. So like my acrobatics side of hand and self, they're all plus two. That's my dex. Mm -hmm. But then where you're proficient, we have the P, you add the plus two proficiency bonus. Got it. So all the green ones would be plus two because my dexterity or my proficiency bonus is a plus two for dexterity stuff. Yeah. Okay. So the purple stuff. So it would be a plus three, not a plus five for all the intelligence items, right? Yeah. And is it for all of them or just the ones that I picked? The ones you're proficient, you get an additional plus two. So yeah, your nature, you'd get the the extra plus two as well as your medicine. Okay. And then medicine would be plus three. I'm going to talk a little bit. About, I get to time to pick my starting equipment. So I'm going to go, I can pick a martial weapon and a shield, or I could pick two martial weapons. Martial weapons includes like swords. I'm pretty sure mm -hmm. if I go to the weapons page, I think I have that one bookmarked. Nope. All right. DBU alum over here. Uh, so martial weapons, that would include like a long sword which is what I'm going to give myself and a shield. We're going to get to weapons and like the stats of those later. You want a simple melee weapon? Yeah, I could pick, I could, no, I want five javelins. That's what he would have. I could do a, like a staff or five javelins. He would throw javelins. And then uh, I could choose a priest pack or an explorer's pack. I'm choosing explorer. Because he may be religious, but he's from a noble family. Mm. So they wouldn't send him out with like candles, you know. Uh, <laughs> and I get chain mail. Cool. And a holy symbol, which for Aurora Invicta is. Uh, it's like a symbol of a sunrise or it's like a woman with long red hair. Cute. Yeah. Uh so let's talk about your equipment. Mm. On uh page three, the G, the green and the greenish blue. You can start with a wooden shield or any simple weapon. So simple weapons are items like clubs, staffs, daggers, mm. things that aren't hard to use. So club, dagger, great club, hand axe, javelin, light hammer, mace, quarter staff, sickle, spear. I'm with a dagger. Er, no, I'm gonna go with a spear. The spear, okay. And uh, you could do a scimitar or uh, any other kind of simple melee weapon. What's a scimitar? It's like a curved sword. Oh. What are my other options? Uh, it could be a uh, a club, a mace. A quarter staff. I think uh, I'll go with the club. The spear and the club. I'm either going right. to stab people or beat them to death. Stab. You also get leather armor. Sexy. Cute. Uh, you get an explorer's pack. Explorers. Which we'll go over that. And then uh, you'll get a druidic focus. Druidic which focus. is... It could be like a collection of leaves, maybe a collection of berries, uh, oh. like a small, it's like a holy symbol, but it's a druidic thing that allows you to focus your magic. So you don't need mm. to like use all these components to cast spells. Interesting. So what would um, Melanie Activia have? I'm going with Activia. <laughs> I, I, I have Activia question mark on the first sheet because I haven't fully decided. Can it be something that I have made from berries? yeah okay hmm you could have even like a strand of like different berry bushes i was gonna say it was like a together. kind of like a like a rosary of different berries. <laughs> wooden berries from around my home i love that a rosary of berries <laughs> wow. from my cottage 
in the woods uh, homestead in your cottage in the glen uh <laughs> exactly uh something else about you is you know another language you know druidic the secret druid language Ooh, fun so druidic you can use this to leave secret messages which mm-hmm. we're gonna put this is i'm gonna put under traits because it relates to your background okay so that's the yellow page page two so so i can put so you can leave hidden messages uh if they roll a dc 15 perception uh they can find the message but they can't decipher without magic they can't so it's like a secret message you can leave for other druids. So anyone oh. else who speaks druidic will see it and be like, oh, Activia? Is everything all right? You know? It's like when mm. Aragorn's like, not idly do the leaves of Lorien fall. Like, not idly does Activia let us know about our tummies, you know? Uh, <laughs> you also get spell casting, which we'll get into... Mm-hmm. Uh, I usually do that as our last step. But at first level, you're going to get two cantrips. What does that mean? Yeah, so the cantrips are spells you can cast at will. So oh. they, they're they not other spells. You only have a limited amount of spell slots uh-huh. you can use. But if you go to page, uh, page four, your first magic page, uh, oh there are spell slots. And mm. pink is cantrips because I did a Roy G. Biv. But so I put amount of levels. two there. Yeah, two. And we will pick your cantrips later. Ooh, ooh. And then, uh, okay, Druid table shows how many spell slots you have. So at first level, you're going to know two first level spells. That's red? Yes. So we'll get into how magic works because that always trips me up in like what spells you know there's like spells you know and there are spells you have prepared things you ready to go and sometimes to keep it simple i just give people okay you got two slots here are your two spells but technically for some classes you can have the entire spell book but you only have a certain amount prepared Mm. but that can get complicated especially for new players right Uh, maybe i shouldn't have picked magic for my first character but this will be fun because i've never done magic so let's talk about your spellcasting abilities. So if you go to the top, the first page, under class, you're going to put druid. Class, druid. And your spell ability, you're keeping that blue because you, it's wisdom. Mm-hmm. It's your heart. Yeah. And then your spell attack modifier is your proficiency bonus plus your wisdom modifier. So that would be two plus Two. that second number next to wisdom. Three, so it'd be five. Yes. And your spell save, which is what other people have to roll to avoid your spells, mm-hmm. is eight plus your proficiency bonus, which is two, so 10, plus your wisdom modifier. So 13. Yeah. All right. And then, so those are your basic class abilities. Now, for now, as you level up, you gain the druids gain the ability to shape shift into animals, wild mm-hmm. shape. You can, you know, as you advance in levels, you can do a more advanced kind of animal. You choose a circle, uh, your next level, which you could choose circle of the land, which you could be connected to a certain kind of land. So it could be a swamp like your last character, but I feel like it's a meadow. Activia would be forest. Okay. Or okay. grasslands. Maybe grassland. So that means you start to get spells like invis- invisibility, pass without trace. Oh, yeah. Then later daylight and haste, you know. So, uh, okay, so she's in like an open, more farm agricultural community. Yeah, Not yeah, yeah. deep in the woods. Okay. And then, because there's also Circle of the Moon, yeah, which homestead. focuses on animal shape-shifting. So if we go to, if we're doing Franny, Francesco over here. Some of his abilities include uh, he has a divine sense, 
fun. which means uh, he can sense evil and good, like angels, demons. Uh, and I can use that to one plus my charisma modifier number of times. I can do a spe- special spidey sense. So fun. three. And so within 60 feet, I know if there's any celestial fiend or undead. All right. Fiend. So I can, he, you know, he's attuned to those, those forces. He also has lay on hands. I can heal from a total number of hit points equal to my paladin level plus five. So six, six, I got six uh, points that I can use to heal people. Boom. And we're not going to get into the details of combats and turn systems. We're focused on character creation. So I don't choose a fighting style to my second level and I don't get spell casting to my second level. Uh, but when I do, it uh, is based on my charisma. So uh, I can't really fill that out because I don't have like, well, technically it would stay the same, but yeah, so it'd be eight to 10. My spell save would be 12. And my uh, spell attack would be four. Yeah. So I also don't get my divine smite till my second level. I don't get health until later. And then I would choose an oath. So because I don't get spells, I have a lot of different abilities that I could get, but most of them are like vibe based or smiting evil things. But I could choose an oath on my third level. So there's the oath of devotion, which is kind of your classic holy knight. There's oath of the ancients, which is like kind of more like woodlandy, woodlandy vibes, and oath of vengeance, which you're angry. It's like your John Wick kind of, you know, killing your enemies. Mm -hmm. we have a couple more steps you know in the interest of time because i know hannah's tired (laughs) we're uh we're only going to briefly touch on spell casting and uh doing you know like what our weapons are going to be in our armor class Mm -hmm. so your armor class would be your constitution you're adding your shield and your armor to that right so we're not going to calculate that number here live you know, and the in the source book, it includes your what numbers are for your weapons. So, like my sword, if we go to the weapons page, my long sword is so I would add to my so oh my no, it's my my armor is my dex plus like so I'm in light art, I'm in chain mail, right? Mm-hmm. So, I would do 13 plus my dex modifier, so that'd be 15, and I have a shield, so that's plus two. So 17. 17. So that's high to hit. Now you have leather armor, Hannah. Yeah, so that things just go right through that. So it's 11 plus your dex modifier. So 11 plus two is 13. 13. So this you're a lighter character, yeah. Uh, so that was quick to hit, but we're not gonna go through all the weapons. But mm-hmm. what it does is, like, say the sword, uh, so it deals one d eight slashing if it hits, and then it hit hitting is based on my strength, so I would add a plus three to try and hit. And so for you, the same would go for, for spear. You would uh, get one d six piercing. You would add your strength if you're throwing it. You would use your dexterity to dexterity. But it would still be a d six. It will still the damage will always be a d six piercing. So 1d6 for piercing, and it's still a strength? Uh, if you're dex? just, if you're stabbing with it, if you're okay. throwing it, it's dex. Oh, interesting. So I would have to like, can I, can I do this? I think I can. Let's see if I remember how to do it. We're going to gradient. Oh my gosh. Gradient oh. with like a red and a green. Oh, it messed up my recording. Oh no. Aha. So gradient color to red and green. I did it. Wow. This is a great little tool you've used. It's very easy to use on Canva. Thank you. Yeah. I think the color scheme helps because it's all connected. So it keeps things, you know, easy. Yeah. Uh, I'm adding my long sword. 
one d8 slashing uh, oh yeah it's based on my strength plus three so we're not going to do all the weapons and certain um, things like your initiative your passive perception that's all in the book it's easy you're gonna need the book if you're gonna do this or at least a pdf of the book i don't know how you get those but uh well the book you go to the bookstore obviously i think i got it from the website i think it's like a free pdf version maybe i think there is or a maybe... free version i think there's a yeah. paid version too yeah, so I think I think I got the free version and I think it's a little bit more limited. It doesn't have all the stuff. And your like equipment packs, like we're not gonna go through every like we're not gonna type all that out, but like explorers pack, that's like a backpack, a bedroll, a mess kit, tinderbox, torches, rations. So just kind of like you're going camping, you know. Mm. Mm, do go to let's do background and we'll mention we'll talk about spells last. And then we're basically you know, I feel like we spent a lot more time on the numbers and I wanted to delve a little more into the character building, but that's the trap of D&D sometimes. <laughs> you get, yes. Okay, let me figure out these numbers. Oh, and I found the language page now. The standard are common, dwarvish, elvish, giant, gnomish, goblin, halfling, orc, and the exotic are abyssal, celestial, draconic, deep speech, infernal, primordial, sylvan, undercommon. Yeah. Uh, Interesting. Yeah, but let's get to your background. Your background is what you did before you were an adventurer. Mm. So you have your acolytes, which are like people who grew up in like a religious like temple environment. Mm. Uh, you have charlatans. So people who are, uh, you know, working for goop. Uh, <laughs> people who were uh, deceiving people on the street, which is different from criminals who are a little more violent. You know, growing up, they treated me like a criminal because I killed somebody entertainer mm. you're a performer also like the goop goop uh Gwyneth Paltrow you'd be a folk hero oh which I modified for my campaign to be like a uh an athlete like uh the one I camp oracle to be like a student athlete but it's mm. like someone who's like respected in their community they did a little thing you know they're like golden a golden boy um which might work for Activia yeah, I was gonna say that kind of sounds right. Um, There's guild artisans, so that's like you know the children of merchants and architects. Mm -hmm. uh, you have hermits that might also are people who live in isolation. You have nobles like Francesco's a noble; he's from a noble house. And then outlanders, people who grew up in the wilds, and scholars, nerds. Uh, <laughs> you have sailors upon the high seas and soldiers who upon the army and urchins uh which is not a reference to the character from the little mermaid animated tv show it is a reference to people who lived on the street like oliver in the dickens novel street oliver urchins Twist. yeah yeah so mm -hmm. what are you feeling i'm feeling the folk hero i you feel like hero? i don't know i feel she like, like cured a like, like a, a curse a, yeah, like there was like a the dancing plague or something was happening. And she found a berry and was like, drink this juice, you know, spread this jam on your toast, feed it to your loved ones who won't stop dancing. Oh my gosh. So she's a she's a legend at her 25, 25 years. Listen, uh, this was last year. It was crazy. It was crazy. She's suddenly really popular exactly uh, so your folk hero gives you extra skill proficiencies oh in animal handling and survival so you add Hold the pee i'm writing the down two. the i'm writing down the particular berry <laughs> in juice or jam form specifically only those two work okay i'm going back to page one Mm hmm okay you get the pr proficiencies so right now you have two but you get four now because you're also good at animal handling and survival sweet and under your like tool proficiencies like with your armor on page two you're good at a type of artisan's tools so maybe gardening tools or woodworking gardening sounds about right and so vehicles, it, land It was vehicles. animal handling and survival? Yes. Oh, fun. And you're good at land vehicles, so you know how to run a cart. 
cool. a little barrel. Yeah. So under, what is that under? That's under proficiencies. It's the box under languages on page two. Okay, so I have a gardening skill. Mm -hmm. And land vehicles. <laughs> That's like carts, horses. Uh, and your equipment, uh, you can give yourself gardening tools. Okay, hold on, hold on. Gardening <laughs> skill and land vehicles. Love how that yeah. is. Um, so under tools or equipment, you uh, gardening tools, gardening tools, a shovel. Hell yeah, an iron pot, a black cauldron, if you will. Uh, <laughs> A set of common clothes. Cool. So your commoner clothing. And you get 10 gold pieces under your money. Cool. $10 cash. Not 150 My God, that'd no. be great. Uh, and you get the feature of rustic hospitality. I put this on page two under traits. Uh-huh. Uh, since you come from the ranks of the common folk, you fit in among them with ease. So it's under traits? Yeah. Like in the same box? Yes. I just kind of list them out. Wait, and then I move it? the... It's uh, rustic hospitality. So rustic. that means you're at ease with commoners and they're going to help you out. They're going to give you a place to stay. They're going to protect you. So it's not like a mechanical. It's more of a story element. Cool. You know, that commoners are like Activia. We who love the dancing plague with her berry jam. Yeah, that's right. They're gonna stand up for you. Uh, love and it. So what? Uh, what Francesco gets for being noble is uh, I'm also good at persuasion because mm. court, and I'm also good at uh, court. <laughs> court, you know, I'm good at history. They taught uh, me yes. what I needed to know, my bloodline, yes. which I did write an extensive bloodline history for Francesco when I was really bored. It was my senior semester, okay? And wow. I got an A in the class. So, but I was sitting there, I was making a little family tree. Love it. Yeah. I had an ancestor named Cordelia. I feel like all of this, all of my backstory stuff could be solved by just playing like a few generations of the sims and getting to activia <laughs> and being like okay that's her that's her i think that's how i have to do you it you could play sims medieval oh <laughs> actually i've been wanting to get it but it's like impossible to launch anything sims 3 in the fucking ea app because ea app is trash anyway. definitely not sponsored definitely uh, not sponsored i'm also good at one gaming set so uh that would be like Cards. cards against humanity yeah <laughs> he's really funny in that uh i get an additional language oh i'm gonna say celestial because it's like latin like had to learn it for religious purposes like oh, elvish is like your french because like court things are doing it and then celestial, celestial is, is a dead language yeah. yeah and in my equipment i get a set of fine clothes so we know who's dressed better here wow <laughs> listen i have cottage core aesthetic <laughs> Uh, fine clothes. I get uh, a signet ring so I can label things. Uh, a scroll of pedigree so I can show people I'm royal or noble. Fuck you. And a per I get $25. All right. Well, you're buying dinner then. <laughs> And then my feature is position of privilege, which is essentially common people respect me because I'm noble, but no, and nobility will help me out. Mm. So similar, but slightly different. Mm -hmm. And it's less of they're helping, the common folk aren't helping me because they love me. It's more like, okay, we have to. Yeah, you didn't save them from a plague. No, I just grew up rich. <laughs> so Franny's backstory, why he was going on the quest was he wanted to get money so he could pay his sister's dowry so she didn't have to go to a marriage she didn't want to. He has, like, a twin sister. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. I'm going to touch on spells ever so briefly because I feel like I have to. 
you get spell slots. So those are ones you can have ready. There's lots of rules about magic, but like for a druid, your magic is going to be nature based. So just like Mm -hmm. pulling up some like cantrips you could know, like druid craft is a lot of simple nature magic. Shillelagh, you can turn your club into a magical nature club. Those both seem very activia. And then if you're looking for your first level spell, there's like animal friendship. She can befriend an animal. She can cure wounds. Hell she yeah. can entangle people in vines. Ooh, uh, she can poison ivy. Good berry, which is a healing berry. Oh my god, that's it! That's <laughs> in my level one spell slot for sure. What yeah. was it? Good berry, like good yeah. burger. Yeah. That's level one. Yeah. Okay, there's animal friend. Okay, we're choosing. Uh, uh well, I'm just gonna say uh uh good berry. A healing freaking berry. <laughs> yeah, because the magic process I often already have... discovered it though. <laughs> the magic process, even when I'm like in a group making characters, I often like will do it. Like, okay, look at the spell, like do this on your own, or we'll get because it can be a long process. That's why we're not going to go through all of them. But good yeah. berry, we had to. I'm so glad that you <laughs> mentioned that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so those are. I know there's a lot of rules that we're getting lost in, but. You know, as we wrap up uh, an episode that's slightly longer than we intended. But just as fun. Just as fun. Some things we haven't mentioned, feats. Some people, when you level up, they'll either improve their abilities or they'll take a feat, which is like a special skill. And let's let's talk about some of these uh, more story-based character building things. But if, as you notice, by like filling out our spells, our equipment, we start to get an idea of who these characters are. Mm-hmm. I put ethnicity in this character sheet because these were real world characters in Camp Oracle that came from planet Earth. Mm-hmm. So people were writing that down. I guess I'll put white for Francesco. I don't know the the complex, the politics of his world. Um, but his hair color is red. I have a mini of him. Oh my gosh. Why haven't I been showing that? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. I remember you showing me that. That's cute. Yeah. Uh, he's got blue eyes, I think. Yeah, because that's what I did in the mini. I tried to at least. And then I do, there's in the rule book, they have bond, what connects you, ideal, a goal, and a flaw. I just do fatal flaw and ideal because mm. just from a writing perspective, you have like the goal, the thing you put in your mind and your fatal flaw, which is the thing that prevents you from reaching it. Mm -hmm. Uh, so for Francesco his ideal is uh, justice uh, in a very like fair like people need to be treated fairly you shouldn't harm people that are are innocent kind of like in a very Mm -hmm. Superman kind of way Uh, his flaw is uh, he's dumb and horny You know, um, that gets in the way. He gets distracted or he doesn't understand what's going on. I already know the fatal flaw. The fatal flaw, imposter syndrome. Oh, she's like, I just like, I just happened to find a random I berry. I just happened like, I to find a random berry and it worked. Yeah. I'm not actually good at this. That's so That's good. That's her fatal flaw. Again, so this process has been a lot easier and a lot more fun. And it's made me actually be like oh I could play this character because it's sort of like a version of me yeah which is very easy for me to connect with and that I can lose myself in um the ideal though she seems um, someone like who's very in- interested in the well-being of her community yeah she seems very community focused even if she's like I can't do anything to help my community she doesn't believe she can but she's trying yes so I guess what what how can we summarize that? Just community. Just that's her ideal. Just... She cares about communities, togetherness. Yeah. yeah. And so that's something on her journey, she can always be like, if a community is in danger, she means we need to help these people. Yeah. Just as Francesco would be like, oh, we need to help these people because like it's not right that that dragon is eating their firstborn. And I you was know? like, this community is going to be wiped out because this dragon is eating people yeah so it's like we could have slightly different approaches to the same goal but we could have a shared goal yeah for sure 
because we're both lawful good characters yes and then i sometimes depending on that you can put a star sign cancer cancer libra i mean justice and horniness yeah uh (laughs) and his tragic backstory is that uh his father is uh an imposing man uh who he often disappoints Mm. and uh his brothers are better than his so he's from uh, a very powerful, wealthy family, and he he has like a dugger amount of siblings. Maybe not that many, but he has like ten. He's one of ten. Okay, you know? so not so, dugger amount. Not dugger. That's like half the dugger. Half yeah. a little. That's less than half the duggers. But he has siblings who are like bishops, lords, powerful sorceresses, and he like an abbess and. It's like him and his twin sister are the youngest. And she's like your classic, beautiful, fair maiden. Everyone wants her dowry. And he's kind of like the, the, he's the spare, spare, spare. Like if we have the heir and the spare, he's like so far down the line. It's almost inconvenient to have an extra boy at that point. Yeah. So he's grew grew up with a lot of privilege, but a very controlling father because they're come from very like an important noble house. How did Activia end up becoming a druid? Um, I don't know. I feel like it's like a family business thing. Like she just kind of fell into it because that's what her parents did. Um, so they like town healers in her village. Yeah, I think so. I feel like she's very tied to her community, but she's she's maybe never been she's still learning right yeah so you know she's the only one that's left so she needs to be the healer for the town oh her parents died in the plague or maybe they're they were just old and died oh my god she's yeah i guess you know that just happens she couldn't save her parents because she wasn't skilled enough and they didn't find the berry yet and then the plague happened and then she just you know yeah. happen to solve it that's why she has the imposter syndrome because she couldn't yeah. save the people that matter most to her there you go and you know francesco's dumb and horny because his education and his he wasn't He's that 21. important he was left, it's 21. left to run around the castle yeah and what does she look like she's white with brown hair has hazel eyes which is, and she wears like cottage core. Cottage core. I mean, is, literally. What maybe she... I'll make her in The Sims, and I'll put <laughs> I'll put that on the screen. Okay. Because they do have a cottage core themed pack that I did buy as soon as it came out. Um. So yeah, I feel like if she could live in the Animal Crossing world, she would. Okay. So yeah. does she wear, like, if you had to compare her to, like, a movie character or a book character, like, like, is she dressed, is she wearing pants? Is she in a skirt? Does she have, like, a, is she, like, Briar Rose she's, cottage core, or is she more, like, no, 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 Katniss no. This Everdeen? Is, this is more, it's also more contemporary. Like, I'm thinking of more of, like, our world. She's wearing, like, overalls that are a little bit patchy she's got some colorful patches on them she's got her gardening boots she's got a nice flowy blouse underneath or maybe like a t-shirt because you know she's been out looking picking berries so she's yeah she's like a medieval modern synergy yeah there you go yeah she wears pants yeah she's rough and tumble and i feel like our still delicate yeah our, our characters meet because there's uh some kind of disease maybe another disease another mm. maybe like a nature disease like a poison in the woods mm. and it's like it's either in my father's land or my brother's land or it he thinks it has to do with another noble family and he's trying to make them look bad oh he's like uh lady jessica's a witch and we're gonna prove it and so he sends me because it's not that important right but to you to me it's important because it's my quest and it's right and to activia it's important because it's her community yeah 
and we have to we have to get to the bottom and we end up on a wild adventure it's gonna be great yeah if, if we go on this adventure together so did I sell you on wanting to do a D&D campaign by doing this? Well, okay. So I know you had thing. desires. I had to... been wanting to, but this process did intimidate me. I think the first time I did it again, like I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't really know how D&D was really played. And so the idea of making a character didn't make sense to me because I didn't know how to yeah. find an in because I was playing with people who had more experience than I did. And so the way we did this was a bit more collaboratively and I like doing this because sometimes I'm like I I get brain fog like I get writer's block of like ah uh, I don't know and then you're like well based on these traits or based on these skills like this is what I think and I was like yeah and then I can run with that right so I can find something that I connect to so uh yeah I kind of love Activia and I'm love definitely Activia. gonna make her I mean I don't love the yogurt uh not sponsored <laughs> but uh I do love it's like this character um I mean the fact that I decided that she berries she's a rosary <laughs> of berries berries just became the thread of her being and yeah turns out one of the spells she can get is good berry come Iconic. on well, I'm I'm glad I sold you on a campaign and I hopefully this helps at least one other person kind of be less intimidated by the process. Maybe we'll cut down some of the parts where we're talking about numbers or assuming we're about. <laughs> but even then, it's like the math is pretty straightforward. And yeah. I do think I wrote about I wrote a paper about D in college where I talked about the difference between playing with like groups of men or versus mixed gender groups or groups of women and different ways they approach the game uh, based on like video game culture and like gendered expectations of like how you do statistics so like i've played with groups of mainly men that are very like you just fight the monster uh and mm. then more mixed gender groups or groups of more women or feminine presenting people they tend to be more interpersonal focused on the interpersonal aspects of the game uh and the storytelling and not to say that the men men don't like storytelling as well right but it's, mm -hmm. I think that's uh, that can be a really fun part of the game, at least for me. Like the the battles and stuff are part of it because you're building your statistics. And if you're paying attention and you're creative, I remember it's like, oh, and I hit the monster with my shield and I jump up and I do this. If you imagine like you're in a story, if you're in a, you're in a movie, that's mm -hmm. what adds to the fun. Like you can already see Francesco and Activia like exploring the woods and they find like this knoll marauder and they're like ah you know like and the way that they would butt heads as like he's you know dumb and horny and she's very concerned about her community and it's you know it's frenemies to not lovers you know like i don't ship them but they become, they become yeah they like they they learn to rely on each other uh, yeah, and maybe they'll solve the scheme going all the way up even beyond like maybe his dad's involved maybe I mean, someone who sent that plague the plague is connected i did say it just happened last yeah. year so it's it, it was the, that was their first try and i yeah. stopped it before it could be like huge yeah and so you're um, on their their watch list you're on a government watch list <laughs> shocking they're trying to reduce the population especially oh of like undesirable communities but she could also be kind of a conspiracy theorist because again that's what i latch on to i was like oh my god yeah and so See, that but, but that is... leads her not to trust francesco because he's from the government exactly. he's noble and she's like yep. i don't trust the nobility i don't trust your like highfalutin mm -hmm. sky religion i don't like your shield with a unicorn on it that is a symbolism that i just cannot stand for yeah you're like unicorns aren't even real and then later we meet a unicorn like it's I, literally I... what's her name from the last unicorn <laughs> and i feel like because i feel like Amalthia? on this journey it, Amalthia. it'd be mostly I, wow i remembered the name how is that possible it'd be mostly activia being right more often than francesco I think she'd have to learn to like get along with people more or whatever, or trust outsiders. But like generally yeah. she knows what she has a better grip on what's going on. But I do think that's like his one thing as they see a unicorn. He's like, there you go. There you go. 
Yeah, but that's the character creation process. I hope that kind of gave you some insights and to like, because there are lots of tools and stuff people create on how to create a character. But sometimes starting with the mechanics aspect and like, okay, you have a vague idea of a race, a class, and you go through the mechanics. It gives you the ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, and because I feel like there's a whole cottage industry around D&D. &D, and sometimes I feel like people are scamming you and selling you products that you really don't need. Because the whole point is your imagination. Mm -hmm. So, you know, get some inspiration, you know, think about it and get a friend to yeah. bounce ideas off of. Yeah. One time with uh, when I was playing in, in grad school, like me and Sarah's character uh, were siblings or like half siblings and like had tension. So, you know, you, you you it's fun as a group. And as a DM, I usually base my campaign off the characters, which is probably how it should be. It's it, it's often easier and it makes, you know, for if you're looking for a more story focused with like characters backstories being connected to the main story. That's what you want to do. Yeah, you know, speaking of, you know, being a DM and telling stories, I think that it would be amazing if we were able to, you know, talk about your experience with Car Camp Oracle perhaps maybe have some of the cast members on to talk oh. about it maybe know. maybe because i was gonna i was about to do the tune in next time for an episode on something another episode <laughs> uh but thanks for coming on this journey with us yeah. uh to do these sheets if we're wrapping up uh you can follow us on instagram and tiktok at not my fantasy pod and if you are on the youtubes Hi, hello, thank you for watching. You can smash that like button. Smash the like button, hit the subscribe notification button, hit the bell, bell button. Notification. Yeah, bell bells. notification. Bell notification. Hit all the buttons. Okay. Except and dislike. So definitely hit all those buttons so you can get notified and leave us a comment. Have you played D D? &D? And what shenanigans would you like to see Activia and Franny get up to first? Like, what yeah. do you think is our first thing we should do? Yeah, their first kind of, like, mission. Mm -hmm. Level one. Yeah. You can follow me on Instagram at Cullen Ever After. And keep checking the Outside In Theater YouTube channel mm -hmm. to see if our vids get posted soon. It's in the works. So, yeah, tune in next time for an episode on something. And it's on a thing. It'll be on, on another a, topic. It'll be on a topic. I love I was topics. so I love topics. And I love that we went from being so far in advance prepared to you know, this is good Not, for us as people. Honestly, we're having to adapt. We're having yeah. to stretch our creative limitations, our production limitations in the best ways. We're being yeah. like because we don't want to just be like, oh, let's just do another video game. It's like, well, let's see what else we can do. Yeah. You know, we're just trying to do a bunch of different stuff to kind of see what we like, what you guys like. So if you like this episode, please let us know. Uh, if you want us to do other systems, which I've never interacted with any other system, so I would be totally up for that. Yeah. Uh, let us know. Let, let us, us know, know what system you want to see next. And let us know if you have, I would love, if you're like, I would love to see Cullen and Hannah, you know, talk about speakeasies like whatever you think <laughs> is related and Listen. you want us you know <laughs> hit us up let us know yeah and i will i can also send you a version of this character sheet yeah i was gonna say like maybe we can uh figure out a way to make an editable base yeah. version of it that you guys can use yourselves if so we could link Good to time. it be like here you go yeah bye lovely right. listeners bye